It's that time of year again. The cold weather is rolling in and the windows in the RV are collecting moisture. Moisture can condense onto any surface, not just the window panes, but even on the walls and the ceilings, vent covers. Since moisture can lead to mold and mildew growth, it's best for your health and for the maintenance of your RV to keep the humidity low in here. The simple fact that you're living and breathing in the RV means that water vapor is in the air. We're exhaling a little bit with every breath. And since no one's willing to stop breathing, you need to remove that water vapor. There are only two options for doing this, run a dehumidifier or ventilate the living space. Depending on the weather, I try to leave a ceiling vent partially open as much as possible. We've installed ceiling vents and vent covers up here on the roof that allow us to make sure no rain comes in and even on a windy day, it stays dry inside. So I'm able to crack these vents open at any time and not worry that a little unexpected rain is gonna fall while I'm away from the RV. Interesting too, water vapor is actually lighter or less dense than dry air, so it will rise and the sealing vents provide the escape that the water vapor is looking for. I find that a bit of ventilation is usually enough to keep the moisture level down, but as the cold winter approaches, this approach alone probably will not be adequate and you may need to get a dehumidifier to keep up. Looking at the models available, they're usually rated as to how large a room they're designed to handle. You can easily estimate how many square feet of floor is in your trailer and get a dehumidifier that will do the job, just length times width. For those of us that need to minimize our use of electricity, we can choose products like Damprid that draw no power at all, but collect water in their own little bucket. These are great for times when the RV is in storage too, and it isn't convenient to use an electric dehumidifier. A similar product that is available is these little packets of rechargeable silica gel. Silica is commonly used to absorb moisture from the air, of course, and it can be reused a number of times. Each time the silica is used, you simply heat it up a little bit to force the moisture to evaporate back into the air, and now the silica would be dry and will start absorbing again. This doesn't fit our lifestyle too well because we live full time in our RV. So heating the packet and forcing its moisture back into our RV's living space really defeats the purpose of having sucked that moisture out of the air in the first place. This product is, however, well suited to the campers who use their RV as a vacation home and can dry out their silica back home in their sticks and bricks house between camping trips. Of course, your breathing isn't the only source of moisture in the camper. We cook, we wash, we shower, and each of these activities releases water vapor. Since our bodies are 70% made up of water, we tend to eat foods that are also high in water content. And when we cook our food, water sneaks out from the food into the air. You can minimize this by keeping a lid on the pot whenever you cook inside the RV. I also like the Instant Pot because it seals the vapor in. Of course, you can cook outdoors even better. Even the flame from the propane stovetop releases water as it heats, so keep it, keeping it outside can be a real big help. We need a source of heat to stay comfortable, and most heaters do not add water to the air or take water out of the air. One type of heat that I do stay away from is the portable propane style of heater that is intended really for use more in a garage. I'm thinking here of the Mr. Buddy heater and similar products. Their exhaust remains in the room and there is water in burn propane fumes, so that type of a heater does add moisture to the air. The propane furnace that's installed in most modern RVs does not operate in this way. It exhausts outside of the trailer, and so it does not add water into the living space. In many cases, the RV's built-in furnace also heats the underbelly of the trailer, which keeps the water tanks from freezing, so it's a good idea to run your furnace when the temperature gets down near the freezing point. We can use a fair amount of water during a typical shower. Many of us in the RV community are always already in the habit of taking what we call Navy showers in order to reduce our water consumption. And this practice also helps to reduce the amount of steam in the RV. Two other big ways to help reduce humidity is to use the ceiling vent during your shower and also to squeegee the excess water from the walls when you finish and send it down the drain rather than leaving it to evaporate on its own. When the water has condensed and you see that the windows are wet, it's a good idea to wipe that water off. Use a towel or chamois, 
but try not to let that towel evaporate and put all the water back into the living space. If the weather is suitable, hang it to dry outside so that it will be ready for use again the next day. When the cold weather comes, many of us like to apply Reflectix to the windows to help reduce heat loss. This works well, holds some of the heat in, but it will keep the glass panes at an even lower temperature, which means moisture will condense on them even faster. Sometimes that moisture will actually freeze onto the window. Some challenging places that we're always keeping an eye on during colder weather camping are the edges of the mattress and the outside walls of each closet. Because there's a mattress or pillow or sweater or whatever sitting right on the cool outside wall, the effect is amplified. The wall's surface is made even colder and water collects in those places more quickly than it does on the other walls. I try to pull the pillows and such away from the walls during the day and let the air circulate, which helps those damp surfaces to dry up. The design of our RV has the mattress sitting on a heated space, but for those of you with the mattress resting on a cold surface, you might want to look into raising the mattress a bit as well for air circulation underneath. I've heard good things about the Frawley sleep system, which allows air to flow beneath the mattress and prevent mildew from forming down there. Using these techniques is going to help keep the trailer's air drier, but remember that camping in cold weather comes with certain challenges, and dealing with humid interior air is one that never really comes to an end. But we can learn how to live with it and keep it at bay most of the time. Check out some of our other videos and subscribe to our channel. New content will be posted weekly.